I'm Dane Miller, an elite strength coach who has worked with numerous Pennsylvania State wrestling champions. I've worked with numerous NCAA All-Americans and NCAA champions, and I'm the personal strength coach for two-time world bronze medalist Nick Gwizdowski. We're gonna do a reaction to one of the most historically significant matches in the history of the heavyweight weight class in NCAA wrestling, and we're gonna start right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna get stronger, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna be a better wrestler, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. All right, so we're about to dive deep into Brock Lesnar versus Steven Neal. And if we can think about right off the bat, Steven Neal is arguably one of the most athletic heavyweights of all time. He's an NCAA champion two times. He lost in the finals to Kerry McCoy, one of the best heavyweight wrestlers of all time. He also won the Freestyle World Championships in Ankara later in 1999. He lost the 2000 Olympic Trials qualifier to Kerry McCoy. He retired from wrestling, went to the NFL, and became a three time Super Bowl champ. He's taken on Brock Lesnar, UFC champ, WWE champ, absolute freak of nature, and this is why this match is one of the most historically significant wrestling matches in the heavyweight weight class. So let's get this started. Now, right off the bat, we've gotta recognize that this match, if Lesnar comes out victorious, he becomes the leader and the hero behind Minnesota's wrestling team. They win their first division one national championship as a team. If Lesnar loses and Neil wins, Iowa wins. Okay, so Iowa will then beat Minnesota for the team title. Neil's coming off of a 20 to five victory in the 1998 NCAA championships. What's even cooler, this is 1999. This is at the Bryce Jordan Center. This is the first year Kale Sanderson won his first NCAA title and Yours truly was in attendance. I was at this match, I had my binoculars and I remember watching Lesnar warm up and I just remember how big he was, how intense it was seeing them warm up. So this tournament, the 1999 NCAA Championships was very, very historic. And it was the first big tournament that happened at Bryce Jordan Center at Penn State. And so now we're gonna check it out. Right off the bat, I'm gonna actually argue that Jeff Blatnick right there with the commentate, commentating, Stephen Neal with a sweet blast double. That's what he was known for. That's how he beat the Russian in 99. I believe Neal is more athletic than Lesnar. I actually remember the guy from Ohio saying uh, Lesnar was just huge, but he wasn't that match strong. He didn't have the match strength, whereas Stephen Neal would clamp on your neck and you just, you couldn't believe how strong he was. Stephen Neal, this is a guy who beat Ricky Williams uh, in in wrestling, the, the running back. See, he had a nice blast level. He had a nice, nice shot there. He doesn't finish this as well, but really good, a much better technical wrestler than, than Lesnar. I'm not sure that was the best way to try and finish that. Yeah, and Lesnar, that was like one of the few moves he was good at was a wizard. Now, um, you know, Neil right off the bat is applying pressure. Nice takedown, terrible shot from Lesnar. Neil just reacts very well, uh, got good speed. So right off the bat in the first, you know, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, you see there's a, a, a about a minute, there was a lot of action with these two um, early on in the match. So Neil cuts him loose. And here's where we start to get, they, they, they start to respect each other almost a little too much. One thing I wanted to point out with Stephen Neal, I had a friend that played for the New England Patriots with Stephen Neal and he would sit there and say how Stephen Neal would do backflips in his shoulder pads and stuff. And I even remember Stephen Neal telling us at uh, Baumgartner's heavyweight camp, he actually had a guy that he lost to his sophomore year of high school uh, and he called a move, it was a front headlock, but he called it like the Cobra. And so he would get a front headlock like this, and if the dude would fight back, it could, it could really do like neck damage. And 
he told us about this kid who beat him his sophomore or junior year of high school and how he just wanted redemption to this kid because the kid had done a backflip over top of him and he put him in the Cobra and the kid they thought for a little while had broken his neck because he couldn't move his legs but Stephen Neal was almost almost proud of that moment because it was this redemption now the kid ended up being perfectly fine but um, that's the mentality of someone like Stephen Neal is like he's arguably one of the best heavyweights of all time. Um, you know, he was at a tough era when Kerry McCoy was an absolute beast. McCoy was a, a, a fifth place finisher at the Olympics. I believe McCoy might have even won a world title. Um, now he's a coach at Maryland, but a phenomenal athlete, NCAA champ twice at, at Penn State. So these two here, just think about that. You got Kerry McCoy, uh, you have Lesnar, you've got Steven Neal. It's very similar to the heavyweight division right now. Um, in freestyle, where where you're looking at Gwiz, our guy Nick Gwizdowski's, you know, a factor, and then you got Gable Stevenson, you've got um, Kassar, uh, you got Mason uh, Paris from from Michigan. You got a whole bunch of studs, and it's 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 very similar to this era, the late 1990s. But again, these guys really, you know, they they really respect each other distance wise. Um, and Neil, I think, was always a little bit better from the outside because he was a little bit more athletic. I sort of wish he would have opened it up a little bit more, but I think he, he paid a little bit too much respect towards Lesnar's um, physical ability and not factoring in that Lesnar was not the best technical wrestler. Um, you know, later on the next year, it took him two overtimes to win his next NCAA title. He barely won an NCAA title. So you've got to realize that he wasn't the best technical wrestler, which is why he got into WWE. And even when he was in MMA in the UFC, he never was the most technical wrestler because he always relied so much on his physical prowess. Whereas when you watch Neil, he dominated, you know, he won a world title with his physical and technical ability. Yeah. And you can hear the commentators talking about that right now, the respect they have for each other. It's two to two here. We've got 40 seconds left in the second. Neil takes a little bit of a sloppy uh, double leg there. Doesn't really set it up well. But again, he, he, he's pushing him around, pushing Lesnar around here. And this is where I wish most heavyweights were, you know, coming out of high school, built like these guys, you know, bigger. 220, 230, just yoke, strong, athletic linemen that can, that can wrestle. And that's the thing that, that helped Neil so much in, in the NFL. He didn't play high school football. And he went on to play with New England until 2011. And so that just shows you his athletic capability and the mindset. And now, I always wish this, you know, now in, in the international style, we've got push-outs. I wish there was push-outs back in the day with these matches. I, I, wish, I wish folk style had push-out points because I think you'd start to see um, a lot crazier matches at the collegiate level, which in turn will bring in even more attention to the sport. And what's frustrating for me as a wrestling fan and a, as, and a strength coach in the sport of wrestling is, I'm gonna redo that. What's frustrating for me in the, as a fan of wrestling and the, as a strength coach for wrestlers is that a match like this, these two guys, this is, this is historic this is crazy and i think that you know usa wrestling could utilize matches and moments like this to really push the sport even further to bring in more action from the outside and bring in more athletes from the outside so we see here nice stand up uh lesnar's got the legs still it's not there's not one yet um he could be he i think he does get hit for stalling here because he's not he's not advancing this position you know the technique he's <laughs> that should have been he should have been hit there at least with a stall warning um and again the technique that that lesnar had it just it it wasn't where it should have been at that point it's just physically he's a specimen you know i wouldn't want to wrestle him <laughs> another stand up you know and he's got a minute 27 left in the third to hold someone like steven neal down for a minute 27 you can see the coaches uh, Robinson, they're trying to help out, give them a, a give Lesnar some good guidance from the side. Yeah, yep. There he's got 
much better positioning. So it's three to two. We got a minute twenty left. Um, Lesnar's got to be aggressive. He's got to be more on the offensive. And this again would be a point where if there's a push out in folk style wrestling this match would have been even crazier because now there's a push out. You've got two huge heavyweights, and if you get pushed out, you lose a point. So it's like, we could add these rules to this match, and all of a sudden, it, it's crazy, right? Especially at the heavyweight class. So that's sort of some thoughts I have rolling through my head while I'm watching this. You know, Neil's sort of backing up. He's not being the aggressor at all. Um, I do remember what he does at the end of this match. Um, just I remember this match so vividly. It's ingrained in my head because I remember seeing what they were doing. I remember the whole Bryce Jordan Center involved and so excited. I remember Minnesota and Iowa, you know, on each side just going nuts. Uh, and this is what, when you're a young kid and you're exposed to this, you want to you wanna be that. And that's what, what I think is so cool about these situations that my dad exposed me to is that I got to witness stuff like this early on in my life and that's sort of, those moments can define who you become as a person, as an athlete, because you want to strive to become a champion. Um, yeah, a little front, tried to go to the front headlock, Neil took a little shot right there. See, Lesnar just, these shots are terrible. He's not setting anything up. He, he, he's not even heavy on the head, which is a little weird. He should be clubbing that neck. But we're going to be, see the little flex from Stephen Neal here. He's going to show the crowd, gives him a little flex right here. And I just remember that so vividly. And then, you know, to see him go on and do what he did in the sport of, of wrestling is phenomenal. That is one of, one of my absolute favorite moments as, as, a, as a person who is able to witness something significant in, a, in the history of a sport. For me to be a part of that and to be in the stadium, it influenced me, one, to wrestle, but two, to then continue when I was done wrestling to you know, focus on becoming a, a, an elite level athlete in the sport of track and field. And then on top of that, it's led me to the point now where I'm still involved and, and it still inspires me to get someone like Gwiz to have those moments where he can fight for that Olympic spot this year coming up in 2021 and, and hopefully further his career, get to the Olympics and, and accomplish some even greater things. He's already a two-time world bronze medalist, so it's, it's cool to look back. That's one of the greatest matches of all time. Steven Neal is arguably the best, at least the most athletic heavyweight in the history of the NCAA. He went on to win that freestyle world championship, three world championships with the New England Patriots. If you want more information about wrestling, you can head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up a wrestling Base strength training program to help you get to the top of the podium. If you want more videos on wrestling-based training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.